Our guest today is Kerry McCarthy, and I'm so excited. She was the UK's first vegan MP when elected in 2005. She's racked up 30 years vegan, you know, uh, and has been highly active on environmental and food policy issues throughout her time in Parliament. She's previously served as Labour's Shadow Secretary of State for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs and as a member of the Environmental Audit Committee and Environment, Food and Rural Affairs Select Committee. Hello. Hi. Hi. Good to Thank see you. Thank you so much for doing this. And I was kind of saying before that I try and practice, well, every vegan tries the soft diplomacy. I mean, occasionally we sort of fail at that and we do the sort of hot eyed, slightly hoarse voiced, angry, weepy diplomacy (laughs) (laughs) generally with uncles but um you know you're someone who's actually out there affecting change which is amazing yeah and I I was quite nervous when I got elected um I remember doing in my maiden speech I was comparing um a couple of my far more illustrious predecessors Tony Benn and Stafford Cripps they would both been vegetarian and you know Stafford Cripps was back in the 1930s and they were both teetotal and I, I I do drink very occasionally but um um, I went through a long period where I didn't really for about 10 years or so so at the time I'd I'd sort of I suppose I would consider myself almost you know teetotal so I said that and I was going to say oh I'm even worse um you know I'm I'm vegan but somebody started booing when I said the teetotal bit and I I sort of chickened out of actually just as a joke you know in the chamber and um and I sort of chickened out because I thought I don't want to get to the start where everyone thinks you know here's this crazy vegan person come in and it took a couple of years before I started talking about it. And that was just ended up being like frustration. Um, I did a debate on Mm. the environmental impact of livestock. And actually I've got colleagues quite recently said to me, I get what you were talking about now. You were right. You know, Ah, we all thought you were, you know, in a gentle way, you were saying we all thought you were a bit bonkers back then, you know, talking about methane and cows and things and soya feed. Um, So yeah, I was a bit, yeah, it's it's just we've just come a huge way and it's it's great that you know one way or another it's all starting to pay off isn't it it absolutely is I'm, I'm going to ask you just before we get into your desert island dishes the foods that you would take with you onto a desert island um what's the food like for vegans in the house of commons better than it was so there's be there's a few other vegan mps have joined me and i know one ah. who's sadly lost her seat but she um i think she was instrumental in sort of doing a bit of lobbying and then uh-huh. um there's, there's someone else now that's pushed so there's 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 more options than there were yeah. and there's one particular chef terry who is very keen to explore new dishes and um he was telling Did me you, he was going to a vegan you, cooking show to sort of learn a few new things have you done that thing of trying to charm charm the chef <laughs> i think it's more that he's trying to charm the, the mps by like so he's oh, trying okay. very hard i mean the, the food in parliament i would say is a bit unnecessarily fancy so rather yeah. than you know sometimes at, like at lunchtime all you really want is you know something on toast or something quite basic and yeah. they do go in for quite quite fancy dishes but um and sometimes some quite unusual combinations like they're quite keen on putting tofu with olives which I don't think is really a thing uh, you know to, I mean, it's, olive, it's, tofu yeah, with tomatoes fine. and olives and it's just uh, okay yeah I wouldn't really make I wouldn't put it in an Italian type dish um but um yeah no it's 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 certainly improved there's usually something that you can find if you haven't bought in your own food but I do quite often bring in my own stuff because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's more the sort of thing I would want to eat like well I like say it's, it's kind of like tagines and curries and things like that at lunchtime okay. to me that's a bit a little heavy a bit much yeah yeah well let's come on to the food that you would take with you if you were on a desert island this okay. is what vegans always get asked if you're on a desert island with a pig what would you do yeah um, <laughs> we, we know what you do you'd, you'd make friends and you know together uh you'd learn to um i don't know build boats or something anyway you wouldn't eat the pig so what would you eat what's your first choice of food and it doesn't have to be a full-blown dish it could be an ingredient it can be a snack whatever you want so this is kind of like hypothetical you could conjure up yeah. things and it's not necessarily based on what you'd be able to find on your little desert island no, i guess no you right? don't have so to i mean just... sand is a strong vegan option I don't know, I guess <laughs> yeah. technically not but anyway yeah, <laughs> yeah coconut <laughs> yeah so um I mean, I think the starting point has got to be curry, hasn't it? Um, You know, and when I'm just ordering from your sort of normal curry houses, I tend to go for, has to be vegetable danzac and tarka dal. That's the test of a good restaurant is how good the tarka dal is. Um, 
but there's a new place in Bristol that's opened up that's sort of Sri Lankan, Southern Indian. And it is so, so good. Um, I've been there a couple of times so far. So I think something with maybe that sort of twist on it. Um, assume, let's assume in the, the island is somewhere off the coast of Sri Lanka, like, or maybe something like the Maldives, which is quite nearby. Oh, I'm yeah. thinking I'm thinking of curry. Yeah. I've got, I've got to say, like, I would never go because it just doesn't feel right that, you know, you can only fly there and you're literally contributing to the demise of it. But the Maldives, I would love to go there. I, uh, yeah, I, I, I went there on election observation mission once. I want to observe an election in the Maldives. <laughs> I know. And the thing was, there was a sort of coup the night that I'm, I'm sitting in the hotel and I'm meant to be flying. Well, yeah, the idea was each MP would be accompanied by a sort of diplomat and we'd go out to an island to observe how they were conducting the elections. And the reason we were sent as election observers was because there were a lot of sort of slightly dodgy goings on um, in oh, wow. terms of elections. And okay, there... I don't want to observe an election <laughs> yes, anymore. <laughs> but basically, um, my plane took, we knew that as at midnight, we knew there was all sort of meetings with the Electoral Commission and it was all on knife edge. But my little plane took off the next to island hop took off at 10 past six the next morning um and at quarter past six they announced the election was off so i basically went to this island um only to be told that there was no election i want to go in the election. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> and i ended up just lying down on a bench all day because the return flight wasn't for another sort of six hours oh. or so 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 um uh yeah no election um but it was it was interesting i can't remember what the food was like there though well actually when we were stranded on the the little airport i don't think there was any food i could eat at all but yeah got to i mean got to sit in the sun 30 years makes you a proper og vegan and you know like i've i've done sort of 10 or 11 years but i mean what were you eating 30 years ago i you know i can't really remember and i've got a sister who's a little bit younger than me and she went vegan first and actually the way I remember it is that she talked me around within like 18 months two years but we did the numbers the other day and I think it was about five six or seven years that she was vegan before me and this was in Luton um, oh, and wow. Luton is not the most bohemian place um, no. it's actually got two little vegan places now and I've managed to be went to one of them when I was yeah. visiting friends um, wow. But back I mean, then, I, I live in Bedford, which is just north oh, of right, Luton. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. And even yeah. in Bedford, we get to look down on Luton. Yeah. Well, we kind of look down on Bedford, actually. Oh, we really? Sort of, especially okay. from the music point of view. We always thought that you were sort of slightly behind the times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, but the one thing Luton obviously does have is a lot of um, South Asian restaurants, yeah, a lot of curry houses. And so I think there would have been quite a bit of that. And I suspect yeah. there must have been a lot of pasta. But even, yeah. you know, I think we'd only just got Holland and Barrett when I started. Yeah. So if it had been before that, you wouldn't really have been able to get even, you know, it wasn't like you get soya milk in um, things. Uh. We used to go on a pilgrimage to Brighton every now and again. Um, a day out in Brighton, they had Infinity Foods that sell, sold vegan cheese. And it was the only uh. place we knew that sold vegan cheese. And I'm not even sure it was very nice, but oh, if you went to be. Brighton no. for the day, you had to come back with your vegan cheese from Infinity Foods because um, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have got it in Luton. But, but yeah, I can't remember. I mean, I shared house with a couple of other vegans and it was kind of like the... You know, we were a little bit too young to be punks, but it was that sort of alternative post-punk sort of, you know, straight edge type scene. So actually yeah. within our little circle, there were quite a few vegans, but obviously within Luton as a whole, it was just, there was, there was probably 10 of us and uh, we were all mates <laughs> with each other. But yeah, I, I can't, I don't, I can't think now how we actually got by food wise. Have you got any sort of legacy dietary, like, do you have, do you now have soy milk in your tea or coffee or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, well, I, well, I, I, um, I remember back then it was pretty horrible. It was pretty horrible tasting. Yes. But you yes. just sort of persevered because I just don't, I don't like black coffee or tea. Yeah, it's, it's got a lot better. So now I alternate a bit with soya, oat, you know, whatever, come, coconut, yeah. whatever comes up. I'll take anything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right, well, let's get on to food number two. Um, okay, so I've been thinking about this. Um. I think I make a pretty good scrambled tofu. I'm not quite sure how this oh. would work on a desert island, but you know, That's normally fine. like with scrambled tofu though, it's it's usually a bit, it's got like turmeric, maybe onions and that. Whereas I just yeah. make it basic. I make it quite cheesy, either with cheese mm. or with yeast flakes in it. 
so I would say, you know, I just mash up the tofu, put a bit of seasoning in. Everything I have has pepper in it, apart from nice. curries. But you know, loads of pepper on it. And now, yes, do you go? For, do you, is it now? Is it black pepper or white pepper? See, I have a, I have a theory about this. In you know, like with red wine and white wine, like red wine is with darker meats and like Italian tomatoey food, isn't, that, uh-huh. isn't it? And uh-huh. white wine is like with fish and chicken. So I'm told I don't really drink uh-huh. wine, but and I no, think it's no, the, but, I think yeah. I think it's the same with pepper. So if I had tomato soup and a black pepper, and if I had a a creamier like mushroom soup, I would have white pepper. So with scrambled nice. tofu, I would go for the white pepper. But I think love I'm it. the only person who's got this theory. But that's I my love theory. your theory. I, I you know you've passed that. That's a contagious theory. I, I guarantee yeah. you, I'm not the only person that you'll have passed that on to now. <laughs> I'm down so, with that. I'm I'm absolutely down with that. Yeah, so I'd, I'd go for white pepper on on scrambled tofu. I like it. your 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 scrambled tofu sounds sounds good. I mean, it is as individual as every vegan's fingerprint, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and maybe maybe some mushrooms in there as well, or marmite on the bread. Um, I do have oh, marmite okay. or or vegemite. I I usually go for vegemite just because I think marmite's a bit strong and vegemite's easier to get a more subtle taste. Um, yes, but. I've got a friend who's vegan who actually went vegan the same day as me because we were sharing a house at the time and wow. I did most of the cooking. So it was like, you know, okay, I've got to do this, but he's stuck with it. And he's got a theory. You can't, you have to like Vegemite or Marmite. You can't like both, but I agree. I, do. I, I, I hate do. to say I was secretly judging you when you said Vegemite. Yeah, because like, well, when I went vegan, I, I, I used to, my joke was, my little joke was, ah, salt, one of the two vegan flavours. <laughs> the other one being sugar. Um, uh, Vegemite's just, it, to me, it just really tastes of salt. And I, I understand what you're saying. That you might know, be why I like it. But yeah, Marmite, yeah. doesn't Marmite taste of salt? It is very salty, but it's also more yeasty. Okay. And I think maybe what you'd hate is Natex. Have you had Natex? There's some, is that something that you tend to get in health food shops? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's sort yeah. of in a slightly marmite pot with a blue yeah, label yeah yeah that's I, my, that's like the other end of the spectrum from vegemite it is marmite with no salt and you would hate it yes <laughs> yeah i think i've i think I've, i've definitely had a sort of you know a, a health food shop type version of yeast extract and it wasn't yeah wasn't it wasn't good, for you. But, um, no yeah that's fine I, i i like it but um yeah it's a it's a thing okay well i i'm interested your your scrambled tofu sounds good you know i like the cheese i like the idea of the marmite on it as well that's a nice that's a good breakfasty yeah bride. so you get double if you've got yeast flakes in it and you've got the, yeah. the yeast extract or something that's obviously double um well, it all depends, in. yeah double b12 depending on there's a lot of new yeast flakes around i've just suddenly seen it sort of exploding yes a bit. what's that all about I don't know, but you know, Bosch have got like a smoky one, um, which is quite bacony. I've got another one from Wicked that has got garlic and herbs in, and I yeah. saw one yesterday in a, a deli in Bristol that has got um, added iron and fibre. So it's like you can pretty much get ones that have got whatever you want added. I, I still, I still love that. You know, I think a lot of people probably stick with this right here. Look, Enjavita, yeah, yeah, breaks. yeah, yeah. But that's got uh, that's now got one with a brown one with iron and fiber in that i saw yesterday i love that it's still set they are still saying delicious dissolved in water milk oh, right, yeah. fruit or vegetable juices <laughs> that stuff. sounds very what yeah, are you like, talking about sort of post-war rationing or yeah, one, like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of when there's oh, no wonderful. other food you, i yeah. suppose if you only had to take one thing to your desert island maybe you were only allowed to take one thing then you could have so long as there was fresh water you could take your yeast flakes then couldn't you and I to, a, I just, eat, just spoon them out of the <laughs> I'm not to, it's sort of like trying to find a vegan alternative to cod liver oil it's just why would you make it so painful <laughs> okay very good uh, let's move on to your third um okay so this is just me pretending that i eat healthy stuff all the time but but uh, okay. during during lockdown so usually my life can be um pretty not chaotic but because I have to be in London part of the week and in the constituency yeah. yeah and I'm working very long hours you you tend to be whizzing from one place to another and there's never anything in the fridge because if you buy vegetables they go off you know you can't buy them in uh, the sort of you know because you, you're leaving home two days later or whatever so you tend to have like be only buy say mushrooms and kale and have a dish that's just got yeah you know, every dish you have has just got those two veg in but during yeah. lockdown That what was great was um, because I was working from home most of the time and doing Parliament by Zoom. Um, 
pretty much my go-to meal every day it was just like steamed vegetables so like carrots and kale and mushrooms and anything you know um uh, just in miso soup so you just steam oh. them and then just stick them in miso and it was just it and it, it actually made just made me feel really really good and I have this theory that carrots make me I've got lots of theories about food as you can tell but I love it I, I love it love it I have this theory that carrots I I, I got through my exams by eating carrots so that whereas other people would like be I don't know what those pills well, are pro plus yeah yeah, yeah, or pro yeah, plus, yeah that's yeah. it yeah or caffeine carrots make me hyper and they keep me going raw <laughs> carrots so I literally I was I studied for my A levels and my degree in that burning the midnight oil munching raw carrots and this was kind of the modern day equivalent you know slightly steamed it definitely yeah. gives you a boost you, you're a full-blown straight edge wild, wild child aren't you carrots forget all these stories about you know rumors yeah. about mps doing all sorts of illicit <laughs> drugs you know carrots is where it is at but i, I think yeah. i'm the only person that i know that it has that effect on but it's probably just because you know it's, it's kind of good for you you know vitamins make you feel a bit more lively yeah. i don't know invigorated but, mm. but I, I i'm seeing like you 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 are all about the sodium uh, I will say that. I mean, oh, that's miso with me, soup. so yeah, yeah. Got time for that. I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah, because I think crisps would have to be. You'd have oh, to have crisps okay. as well, wouldn't you? So that just plays okay. into the whole okay. thing, doesn't it? So is that um, your number four crisps? I think probably. I mean, I haven't got that much of a sweet tooth. I mean, I right. will. You know, I do like chocolate. I like cheesecake when it's done well. But I, there's always that thing: is if you had to choose between crisps and chocolate. I think I'd probably go on the crisps end of the. And what flavour? You can name brands if you if you need to talk about okay. the cheese and onion, or if you need to talk about the well, I was going to say when the yeah. cheddar met the onion. You know, yeah. you can go um, there. But if you're just talking about plain crisp pipers, I would say they they sell them in one place in Parliament, and their sea salt ones are yeah superior to lots of others but yeah the kettle chips the cheese one the, they are good yeah. aren't they and they're only they available really in really good. big bags and that's it's a nightmare very isn't difficult it? Yeah, yeah yeah and they don't stay fresh so you might as well you know really. exactly <laughs> exactly so um <laughs> they're good and black pepper there's some good black pepper crisps out there that that would yeah. um yeah who's doing the white pepper though you know there's a gap in the market there well that is that is true i hadn't thought of that and Definitely, that should be a thing. My sister actually bought me, um, you know, like you now can get all these crisps, like made of pulses and oh, things yeah. like that. And, yeah, you know, and you've obviously yeah, vegetable yeah. crisps have been around for a long time. My sister bought me some the other day that were the, the vegan sister, who's a bit of a feeder. And they were like made of <laughs> oyster mushrooms. And I don't think they're actually very nice. I persevered no. with them, but they... I ended up sprinkling them on top of the the, the vegetable dishes, uh, that, but yeah. yeah, that didn't quite work for me. We're back. So, um, Karen McCarthy, I, I, I want to ask you, and this is, this is, this is somewhat cheeky of me to, to throw this curveball at you, but I am curious, um, before we come on to more of your desert island dishes, um, how did you feel with the whole kind of COP26 thing, when that was all going on and people were talking about trying to stay under 1.5 degrees, um, Earthling Ed's book, uh, This Is Vegan Propaganda, um, he says in that, and I'm, I'm not gonna fact check him, I haven't got time for that, um, that we cannot stay beneath 1.5 degrees Celsius warming without us all massively cutting down on meat and dairy. Mm. Um, even if we stop fossil fuels today, yeah. how did it feel that, like, it was, I mean, was it, maybe I missed it, but was it ever on the agenda? No, I remember asking Gordon Brown when he, he was probably Chancellor then, and asking him, he was talking about the Kyoto talks, I think, and asking him whether food was going to be on the agenda, and it, I don't think he knew what I was was talking about I don't think anyone else really did and then with this yeah. COP it was talked about a bit more as though it was going to be a thing and you've got the committee on climate change recommending um uh, I think it's a 30 percent reduction uh, no the committee on climate change is annoyed is only I think 20 percent reduction and I've sort of gone sort of head to head a bit with the chair of the committee um quite a few times because his view is basically and he actually said at the launch of their you know, report a couple of years ago 
this shouldn't mean you know reaching net zero shouldn't mean you have to eat disgusting food and when i pressed him about it um he said his basically his sister-in-law was a very bad cook and she was she cooked in vegetarian food which is wow. not the basis on which you should be making public policy and no. so his view is that you've got to look at how you would get to net zero but you've also got to look at what the public would stomach and i actually think the way that we've moved in recent years shows that actually there's far more public appetite for it if you excuse the pun than mm. he thinks and there's there's really good food out there and there's lots of alternatives and you know with with a lot of the I was on a, a zoom the other day with the CEO of Impossible Foods and he said like 90% of their burgers are sold to people who are meat eaters that are trying something different right. and you know and that's that's great you know because that's what you've, you've got to yes sort of win people over. those are the they, ones yeah. they might not go vegan but you know if they're thinking well actually this burger tastes better than the the alternative and you know, like Burger King's just got um, its Leicester Square branch went was I was going vegan the whole week. of April. Oh, right? Have yeah. you been? Have you been? I have haven't you been. It? No, I haven't. No, no. I'm not gonna lie, it's really good. <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah, but but you know, I, I went in there just sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. I, I went in there and I was looking at because I hadn't been in a fast food place for years, no. and now it's all it's all computers now, Kerry. Oh, yeah, yeah. screen and this all computers. Anyway, so I was looking at this thing and wondering what button to press and stuff. And this guy came in and went, is everything in here vegan? I went, <laughs> yeah. And he went, oh. And he flounced out, mm. taking with him his two dogs on a lead. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh, you're an animal lover, I see. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, yeah. off you go. And he probably, if he hadn't looked at the signs, he probably wouldn't have realised at all. No. He probably would have thought, how come this is nicer? My usual yeah. burger. But yeah, so the, where we are now is it's an improvement on where we were maybe a few years ago when people just didn't get that it was a thing, weren't talking about it, didn't want to talk about it. And now it's acknowledged, it's it's accepted that actually land use and diet, you know, dietary change has to come if we're to meet net zero. Then there's a bit of a lag because although people know it, they don't really want to know it. Yeah. You know, and particularly policymakers don't want to accept it because and this was what this, this this meeting I was at the other week was was about is, you know, what levers are there to press? And you've got, it's a bit of an ideological thing, you know, with, with a, a conservative government tends to take a view that you leave things to the market, quite a laissez-faire approach. We shouldn't be too interventionist. And you had this whole issue, you know, when it comes to things like smoking bans, or at the moment yeah. we're having this argument about sugar tax you know, and how you deal with obesity and whether you actually, you know, a huge row about the soft drinks levy because some people were just saying, well, it's up to, you can make information available so people can make that choice. They can choose to eat more healthily, but you've got to give them the freedom to make that choice. Mm-hmm. Whereas you know that if you leave it to that, you just don't make the progress that you need to make in the time that you need to make it. And actually the plastic bag tax is the best example of that because the moment that came in, you know, 5p levy and use mm-hmm. went down by more than 80%. So and me being, you know, being socialist, being Labour, I'm far more keen on intervention. But the, yeah. the difficulty is when it comes to food, whereas it's obvious, yeah, you know, with smoking, it's quite obvious what the levers are, you know, so the ban in smoking in public places and the advertising and putting a tax on it and all that. And with food, it's not so easy because I'm not that keen on the idea of meat tax. I don't actually think it would work very well. And it's always like, you know, it would have more of an impact on poorer people and all that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Could just drive them to eat worse meat. You know? Yeah. Um, what else can you do to encourage things? And I think the thing that I'm really pushing on um, is, so Henry Dimbleby, who produced an excellent food strategy for the government last year, um, Michael Gove commissioned it. And I think Michael Gove was behind quite a lot of it, but now he's moved post and, you know, George Eustace is in charge and not so imaginative about things. But that's also calling for a significant shift in diets. Um, and one of the levers would be public procurement. So right. in terms of like what's provided in schools and hospitals and prisons and the public realm gen- generally, you could actually, that's one way that you could try to shift diets um, by making money available. Yeah, at the moment, schools have to, um, under the National School Food Standards, have to provide meat at least twice a week um, uh, if, wow. you, so if you're a state school. Um, right. So, and they have to provide you know the, the dairy and everything so you could sort of change those things um uh yeah. but 
but I think you know to an extent you know like I say the market is you know people are changing their habits the market is responding but I think we could still do more to nudge that along fascinating but we're getting there you know we're in a much better place than we were five years ago we are and it's it's so nice and encouraging to hear you uh talking like that because I think I think all vegans get you know you reach those moments where you're like oh why is my brother not vegan yet yes. <laughs> exactly <laughs> but you're right we are we're yeah. doing we're doing good we're doing good all right so we've had crisps what's your food number five um i don't know i was thinking i should think of a dessert but i can't really i tell you what actually, actually. salted caramel salted no no, 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 no. <laughs> i'm just yeah um yeah i do like salted caramel that's terrible isn't it? <laughs> I, it's I, consistent yeah i do um i do really like that my mother used to make really nice um sort of rice puddings or sweet macaroni Oh, like yeah. with that and I've been trying I've got a slow cooker now and it's actually quite shocking when you try to make so you buy the sort of pudding rice and but but you can do like coconut milk is really good on it you know, yeah, not, yeah not the not the tin sort of coconut milk but the, just the drinking coconut oh okay milk. yeah but I, suppose I you made could it with the tin stuff coconut it's, milk yeah it was delicious it was so fat, yeah. fatty yeah it was but, delicious but you, it, it is quite it. shocking though because you have to put yeah you have to put like equivalent butter substitute in and you have to put a lot of sugar in and then you put that although I think actually if you've got sweetened milk then you don't need as much sugar but you do sort of realize oh my god this is not this is not a low not calorie healthy. dish no <laughs> no no, no. no. <laughs> but and I haven't quite made it as well as I obviously the, the version my mum was making wasn't vegan back then um mm. but I've never quite made it quite as good as her but it's and the problem it's is you always end up making like far more yeah but you you always make far more than you think it's you know it turns into something huge like risotto yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, there's one thing I'm, I'm I think I'm fairly good at cooking is risotto but you think you're mm. going to make enough for a couple of days and it's enough for like a month and you just end up, <laughs> <laughs> you just have to add different things to it it's like oh, this sort of, you know I'm all about the leftovers and also yep. you know I mean cold rice pudding like the next yeah. day oh. actually you're, you're really making me think this is something yeah for breakfast you can have cold rice yeah. pudding for breakfast. Yeah, of course you can. It's it's not actually that much yeah. different. It's, it's cereal, granola. isn't it? Sure, yeah, it's yeah. usually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Nothing so, wrong with um, that. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with elective foie gras. You know, if you're making it yourself in your own liver, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I've never tried making, have you tried making macaroni? Did you ever have No, I was, was going to come on to, I wanted to ask yeah. you about that. I, I once made chocolate spaghetti when I was a student, but that's the kind of goofy thing you do when you're a student. You a student. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to lie. I loved it. Yeah. No, this was great, but it was it was pretty much the same as rice pudding, but it yeah. was macaroni. But you could suck the very sweetened milk through oh, the tubes, yeah. and it was lovely. And it would go a bit sticky together and a bit crunchy. Kind of places. congealed and yeah, oh, yeah, come quite on. solid. Yeah, and mum mum used to make that. I think it, back in the you know you're talking about in the seventies, and yeah. um, and then you know I remember when we first started eating spaghetti. Yeah, other than the tin type, it was pretty exotic. You know, we were yeah, yeah. being very, uh, you know, um, uh, yeah, very cultured doing that. But <laughs> before that, yeah, but this this sweet macaroni, um, I think there was this idea that desserts ought. To, it was like a post-war thing, wasn't it? Really, right. that yeah. Well, my mum was like a po- yeah. She was born nineteen forty-two, so she would have grown up during that. It was post-war years, and I think it was the idea that milky puddings were a very good thing. It's like at school dinners, you'd always have like yeah. semi semolina and tapioca and that, and it was like that's where your kids got your milk from, and the, you know, notwithstanding yeah. the fact that it's absolutely you got shed loads of sugar in it as well. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I think that must be where it came from. From, but maybe I should ask her. I mean, it's uh, I'm I'm visiting in a couple of weeks. So I should be telling oh, her. Oh, I, I, seriously, <laughs> I want to know how to make the macaroni pudding. Yeah, yeah. I think it's probably if exactly you get the, the recipe, yeah. let me know, and because we'll share it on the website. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be but, amazing. Uh, I mean, she's become quite good at baking vegan cakes. As as I've got five oh, sisters, and they're all they all bake. I'm the only one that doesn't bake. Um, so between them, you know, you can rely on them to, to come up with. It was a bit hit and miss to start with. So I remember she made yeah. one cake once and she used to put bicarbonate of soda in. Oh, and dear. there was one where, <sighs> and she tried vinegar, I think. That was something that was used quite a lot to start with in vegan making. Yeah. But she made one and I tried this and it, it was almost like swallowing mushing up liquid. It was just so, yeah. so soapy. And I think she got she must have used tablespoons instead of teaspoons or something, but I was almost foaming at the mouth. So that one had a bit. <laughs> but um, but she's 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 pretty good now at that. Yeah. Rabid vegans. Love it. 
All right, brilliant. Well, so rice or macaroni pudding? I, I love that. I really so. love that. I think that would be that would sustain you, wouldn't it? If yeah. You make it in bulk and. Yeah. And with the coconuts, it's yeah, going to be delicious. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got another one? Number six. Oh, this was just because I was talking to someone about it today. But I do like aubergine, but it's very difficult to do aubergine well. I think, oh. you know, there's a lot of like, you know, it's undercooked and, you know, just yes. disgusting. And, yes. and really to cook it well, you've probably got to use a lot of oil. I think that's the, the problem, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but when I was and this was, you know, when um, so I did Russian at university and been over there quite a bit but also I went to been to Ukraine a, a couple of times but there was one trip yeah. that I made by myself where I traveled down from Kiev down to Yalta in the Crimea and that was not great it was actually ironic there was a McDonald's there with a huge statue of Lenin outside it amazing and I don't, and I don't know whether that sort of survived um but it was I ended up having to go into the McDonald's because there was like just it was so difficult to find things to eat but there was one restaurant that did a dish called Iman Bayildi I think something like that Bayildi and it was translated then in English on the menu as Iman's gone crazy and, huh? uh, and but I've seen it now elsewhere in places like Turkey and, and that it's called the Iman swooned and it was meant to be that ah. the, the, they swooned because the dish either was so wonderful or because his wife had used so much olive oil making it but it's basically right. baked, baked aubergine with loads of olive oil tomato sort of stuffed aubergine tomatoes um not really that much else you know garlic yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. but the way I had it there usually the recipes that I've seen online like the Turkish version and that don't seem to be that spicy but this was like really really spicy and I ended up having it like almost every day that I was there because literally <laughs> other, other than fries from McDonald's there was there was just nothing else <laughs> like um and um and I like the fact it's got this sort of story behind but now I've discovered I keep hearing different versions of the story as as yeah. to why the Iman either well like I said it was it was translated then as Iman's gone crazy but now um, I've seen it elsewhere as Iman swooned yeah. fainted with joy yeah, or, or or sodium overdosing. I don't know if this has got sort of... No, 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 it's garlic, <laughs> garlic and oil and, you know, chilli, which is which is my neck. I'd say after pepper and sea salt. Yeah, yeah, you've yeah, yeah, to, yeah. You know, Garlic and chilli, you've, you've got to take those to your island, haven't you, really? And can you take your... Uh, you, you, can, you can take a fair bit of chilli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, I was very confident. I was very, yeah, yeah. I grew up yeah, in I Luton. Can. Like I said, there's a lot of curry. Of <laughs> course. Know, a lot of curry of houses. But I'm more at the sort of that. So a decent Danzac ought to be like quite, quite hot, um, but a mixture of sweet and sour. So you yeah. just get it quite right. Sometimes Danzac can just feel like a, a really bog standard curry. But um, for it to be done right, it actually ought to be quite at the hot end of it. And I would sometimes yeah. go for a gel frozy. I wouldn't really go up to, yeah, I don't go up to the yeah. Vindaloo level because that's just silly but yeah. but yeah i can I, I can handle quite a bit of spice you know i was gonna try and leave the politics out of it just because you know this is about food and not politics but just because you've mentioned ukraine and russia and your connection yeah. to it what are you making of that whole situation it's just hideous isn't it russia's are like a really difficult country to sort of understand its psyche if you like um yeah. you know and I the reason I ended up studying Russian at university because I started reading some Russian novels and there's all like an element of sort of surrealism about them but you know very dark and yeah and that's still sort of perpetuated to this day I, I sort of in some ways I love Russia but in other ways I I sort of hate certainly the way that Putin operates but the way it's never really embraced democracy and so on um yeah we had Zelensky address us in parliament from the screen and it made me feel pretty uncomfortable because, you know, he's there in a bunker knowing that there's gangs of hired mercenaries trying to kill him, you know, knowing that his country's been bombed around his ears. And there was MPs sitting there sort of almost like being a bit self-congratulatory as, yeah. you know, we're, we're almost like sharing in his heroiz heroism um, yeah, by yeah. listening to him. But, you know, at the same time, it was very moving. Um hearing him speak although my my headphones stopped working we had translation I mean, so I was sitting there pretending that I could follow his Russian whereas I could grasp yeah. like every other word or whatever yeah. you know and couldn't make any sentences but um it's horrible and, and the more that detail that's coming out and um, so I think we haven't moved fast enough as we could with things like the sanctions and that we need to sort of carry on giving as much military support as we can to them I just hope that one way or another it can be resolved as you know it's just it's, it's I think even in the last few days it seems to have gone from being 
with lots of pictures of like say buildings being bombed and you know, yeah and that's like to suddenly realizing it's it's not just that people are, are casualties of the buildings being bombed people are you've seen pictures being targeted of targeted yeah. um, you know and hearing about rapes and just and, and it's just sort of i don't i feel like i almost can't say because it you know it almost sounds like you know banal to sort of be just saying it's terrible isn't it you know yeah. but well like, you know, i was it, the one who is, brought it up so yeah <laughs> but, but um yeah, yeah. It's very sad. horrifying. No. Yeah, no. absolutely. Um, well, thank you for your foods. We've got curry, scrambled tofu, miso soup with steamed vegetables. That's very virtuous. You know, and, that's just a bit fake, really, isn't it? And when you really <laughs> want to push the boat out, carrots, if yes. you're doing an all nighter. <laughs> to keep me going. <laughs> yeah, crisps, uh, rice or macaroni pudding, and aubergine. Um, is there a food that you hate? What's the one thing we should never serve here? Yeah, um, celery. Yeah, most celery. People, most people hate celery, don't they? A lot of people. Sure. Celery stroke celeriac, and yeah, and I can taste it in almost anything. Yeah, if there's a tiny little bit of oh, really? celery in okay. it, I can tell it's there, and I don't like it. Like there's a there's a band of crisps actually, a tomatoey flavour ah. like that's got you know, and you celery almost think they're in. nice, but it's got celery salt in, and it, you just you know, it, wow. You know, I can't persevere with that. And also fennel, fennel and sort of aniseedy type things. And yeah. there was a little phase where people would, you know, if, if you end up having to eat out at functions, which I do occasionally, there was always a thing. It was, it was at one point it was always like stuffed, actually stuffed aubergine was quite popular, or stuffed peppers. Um, and, you know, they move on, you know, then it becomes a little thing with couscous becomes fashionable or whatever. But there was yeah. a phase when fennel, braised fennel was a thing. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. be, and you don't want to be the fussy one because you're already being the massively yeah, fussy one by being yeah. the vegan. It's and true. your heart sort of sinks where they sort of bring out the one thing that you hate. You know, or yeah. One of two things. Yeah. I, feel, I never really sort of phrased it in that way. When you're vegan, you've already used up your fuss credits, haven't you? You can't. That's it. It's you kind spent. Of, yes. Yeah. And you, yeah. You, you feel like you can't be, you know, dictate well, anything else. I share your love of aubergine and, and almost everything. It's steamed vegetables. <laughs> but um, Anton Petrov on this podcast gave, uh, he shared a recipe for celeriac. I promise you, as someone who hates celeriac, one day I'll make it for you and you can try it. And, and I swear it will change your mind. Sure. It's the only time I've ever had it that I like it, but it's really good. What's he do with it? So you, you cut it super thin, like two or three millimetres thin. Mm. You brush it with hazelnut oil. I've used walnut oil and it's worked. Mm. You season it with salt and you wrap it in parchment paper. You put it in a really hot oven for about 18 minutes, I think, and you flip it over halfway through. Mm. And it kind of steams and caramelizes in the parchment paper. And when you pull it open, it's sort of, it's it's soft and it's melty, but it's also got a little bit of bite to it. But m most of all, it's oily and delicious <laughs> in that kind of aubergine way. Okay, yes. just to reassure you, it's yeah. salty and it's oily, and it's got this sort of nuttiness to it. It's so good. It's so good. Right. I'll make okay. it for you one day. One day. <laughs> that, you want to promise Bristol. then? My cousin <laughs> lives there. And, I'll, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'll, I'll get my mum to make you macaroni pudding in return. Yes. There you go. Yes. It's a I, deal. I, so. I, know, I know she will already have one. I mean, you know, I'm not going to... It's good, but it's not macaroni. It's not as good as that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Karen well, McCarthy, thanks. thank you so much. Really, really appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk to us. And um, uh, do you do the social media stuff? I, I do Twitter, although, to be honest, I find it quite hard work these days. Um, it's just a really chilled out place to <laughs> hang out with cool, like minded people. It is. And you can say whatever you like and yeah. then have a really sort of sensible discussion, nuanced and you yeah. know, people appreciate yeah, yeah, yeah. all the different angles to an argument. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nuance. And, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, nobody just sort of jumps on and twists what you no, say. No, no, or no, no, sort no, of no, all. Yeah. No, no. no, no, no. Um, and I have a Facebook page, but um, uh, my, my staff do that for me. So, okay. Um, I, I, I see, I approve the posts that go on, but I never really got to grips with Facebook. It would seem to be my mother's friends sending me things about farms, yeah. buying things for farms, and I didn't really understand <laughs> that. So, you know, <laughs> there's some game, yes. isn't there? Oh, never, yeah, right, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 some, yeah, yeah, some farm things. And, yeah, so I decided to just have a page. But, um, yeah. yeah. And, Good plan. Yeah. 
in theory well, I've got an Instagram thing but I've never I, I, I forget that I've got it and every now and again I post a picture like of a vegan burger and say you know there you oh, go. found this that's, in Strasbourg or whatever and then I forget about it for a few months that's but, that's how you do Instagram you've done it yeah, congratulations yeah. So, um cool. keep keep fighting all the great fights really appreciate you taking really the time well. nice talking to you